Hello and welcome to the second installment of my Kerbal Amateur Space Program. I have uh, set up a scenario here where poor Madcast Kerman was about to land on the moon but he had to abort and go back into orbit. Unfortunately he burned up all of his fuel. It was actually a little difficult to set up because I have already recorded this but uh, when I went to edit it I found that my game sounds were too loud so I've turned all that down but having just refueled this uh, Mooner Lander um, <laughs> then had to burn off all that fuel again but poor Madcaz uh, this was a rough time for him to find out that um, all the other vessels around the moon use the Clampatron Senior and he's running with the regular size Clampatron. So we're actually going to have to launch a ship to refuel him. So we built one and we're ready to launch it. Uh, I am using a command pod but I used uh, crew manifest mod to kick Bill out of there because Bill is supposed to be on my next crew rotation coming up shortly so we are ready to launch with our uh, Mechjeb ascent guidance we're just gonna hit that and then we will get it into orbit a couple of things that I will point out is uh, it shouldn't be a problem with with this ship but uh, I try to limit terminal velocity because Mechjeb will waste a lot of fuel uh, more so RCS fuel than uh, your liquid fuel so limiting the term terminal velocity will reduce the drag as you're coming out of the atmosphere um, and you won't be wasting as much uh, a fuel and of course you want to put on your uh, prevent overheats here and careful with your auto stage um, my most common one is when I just build a simple ship to launch uh, or, or if I'm testing it out here uh, and I only have two stages, say the first stage is my rockets and the second stage is parachutes, or correction, it would be stage one is my rockets and stage zero is parachutes. Megjeb will go ahead and launch your parachutes, so you want to go ahead and, and put in what stage you want it to stop at. But not an issue with this craft, so we're going to go ahead and head on up. And like I said, there won't be any game sound because I went ahead and turned that off. It was just too much. One thing that uh, take a little while to get used to is when to start your gravity turn, and um, and Scott Manley has a pretty good video about gravity turns. Uh, he points out that everybody does it wrong, and uh, he goes through a few examples and shows you the uh, the difference in fuel consumption based on when you start your gravity turn. Uh, what I've found that works best for me, and this may not have any basis on what's actually happening with game mechanics, but if I have a heavy ship, I want to start a little bit later and hit it about uh, 10,000, but a lighter ship, a probe, something like that, start uh, about 5,000. And I'm really just basing that off of the nav ball. Um, specifically that you want mech jeb to try and keep your uh, artificial horizon close to where your uh, prograde ball prograde marker is at um, and that's gonna really reduce the lag or, or I guess really what it's doing is it's keeping the prograde marker close to the 
artificial horizon just reducing lag more um, and that or not lag um, drag um, keeping that drag down will uh, really help out with your uh, fuel consumption rates I tend to overbuild my ships um, because of that, because Megjeb is wasting the fuel. So it's usually not an issue, but in the case like this, where I'm trying to get as much fuel to the moon as possible, uh, it can be rather important. And now we're just waiting for Mech Jeb to finalize our orbit. I'm going to go ahead and start transferring some of this fuel up into my uh, forward tanks. Try and take as much of this with me. I My general thought here is that I would rather these nuclear engines are burning that fuel than these large uh, engines on my uh, lift stage. <clears throat> and with any luck, that uh, yeah, that uh, won't even be debris. It'll go ahead and, and deorbit, and we won't have to worry about that. So that worked out pretty well. And there we are. We are in a stable orbit. Go ahead and plan our move to the moon. I'm going to need my warp helper, so I'll go ahead and pull that up. And we'll just set the moon as our target. And if you didn't end up with a, a uh, zero degree, degree inclination orbit, you will, should go ahead and match um, your plane with the moon so that your transfer will be Good. Or if, if you know you were going to Minmus, you want to go ahead and match planes with your uh, maneuver planer. Uh, we're not going to need that, so we'll go ahead and do our Holman transfer. Create and execute, and that will get us our transfer to the moon. One of the things uh, about these nuclear engines, though, is that they do not have a lot of, uh, of thrust to weight. So these uh, transfers take a long time. You notice that it's actually started firing well before we hit our node. Uh, it's compensating for how long it's going to have to fire. So MegJab does take that into account. If uh, you were flying manually, and you had this same setup with the uh, nuclear engines <clears throat> and you started burning right at you know T plus zero you would find that it's possible especially if you're going out to Minmus that by the time you actually get your apoapsis out to where you should be um, getting a, a moon encounter you will actually miss it's possible um, if that's the case you can and you can even do this with Megjeb if you don't think that it's going to work out. It's better for fuel to abort the node execution. Set up a new node to transfer and then make a trip around curb and come back. It's just going to work out a lot better for you, uh, fuel-wise. Uh, in this case, I think we'll be okay. And I say that because I already did this once tonight. <laughs> But I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this.
Okay, and we're about to get our encounter with the moon, and I'm going to abort a little bit early, and it's just going to save us a little fuel on, on the far side. Okay, and remove my nodes. If you leave Megjeb on this home and transfer, it will give you the same transfer it would if you were trying to rendezvous with a uh, craft, which means that it will put you right in the middle of the moon. This is going to give us a periapse of about 531. Um, if I want to tune that a little bit, I could just open up the smart ASS and thrust a little bit prograde and, and it'll bring us in, but I'm not terribly concerned because we still have to make our rendezvous. And we're going to want a little bit higher um, orbit than our target anyway. So this is going to bring us in and we can go ahead and set that lander as our target once we come out of warp. don't need to warp helper anymore set our target and first thing we need to do is circularize at that periaps and we'll be a little off as our uh, matching our plane to the target but our rendezvous assistant will help us out with that Again, Mech Jeb should start burning a bit early, but it's not nearly as big of a burn as what we were trying to do to transfer. And while it's doing that, we can go ahead and pull up Rendezvous Autopilot and Rendezvous Planner. Even if I don't think that I need it, I'll go ahead and pull out the planner because it will show me our, my uh, separation at closest approach. Um, you could go into MechJeb and put that information onto the custom window. Put it on any of your uh, orbit or vessel or surface um, windows as well. But I, I prefer to just have the rendezvous planner and there's one reason that I usually need it anyway. I'm hoping that it does it in this instance. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But occasionally this uh, rendezvous autopilot will give me a node in 68 years and I'm kind of wanting to rendezvous a little sooner than that. We'll go ahead and hit our uh, autopilot start our rendezvous <clears throat> if you tried to go ahead and you know, see our moon landers at an altitude of about a hundred thousand if we went ahead and put our periaps at a hundred thousand here m the autopilot would go ahead and put you in a higher or lower orbit anyway just to increase or, or lower the phase rates to make the rendezvous happen with the uh, least amount of delta V required so that's why I wanted to go ahead and take this 500 kilometer orbit and you see here we didn't bother getting uh, in a uh, increasing or lowering our phase rate from this orbit it's just going to go ahead and give us our, our transfer And after this burn, we'll find out if it's going to make a liar out of me. One thing that uh, the autopilot is really good for, previous versions of MegJeb 2, um, this was not included. And it would rendezvous you <laughs> very close. Um, one of the first times that I saw it happen... Uh, 
the comment was, yeah, we're going to lose a lot of solar panels to that. And, and it did. It gave me the 68 years. So all we do is we disengage the autopilot and remove that node. And then we're going to go go to our planner. We could do this with the maneuver planner as well, but you got the button here. You want to match the velocities and execute next node. And MegJeb will go ahead and finish up our rendezvous. And it's showing 95 meters, which is good. We don't want to be too close. Um, with two small vessels like this, you could go even lower. Um, as you start getting larger and larger stations, you might want to push that out to a couple hundred meters away to make sure that you're not actually hitting your uh, station as you get close to it. Okay, and again, uh, with those nuclear engines, we're going to go ahead and start sh start this uh, burn a little early. But it should get us, we want to be below 200 meters. Below 200 meters is where we can select the docking port on the target that we want to dock with. And it looks like we're going to be okay. Now just close these windows go ahead and pull up our docking autopilot you want to control from your clamp it's more important when you have more than one so that MechJeb knows which one you want to push towards the target and then you need to select the docking clamp on your target set that as your target click the autopilot and MechJeb will go ahead and take care of that problem you have of having too much RCS fuel. Now there is a way around it. Um, now this speed limit, I don't see that there's any difference in it. I can set this up to 100 and it's still going to go at 0.4 meters per second. Um, some ships, some smaller ships that where it doesn't have to move as much laterally. And this one I've only got the three RCS ports on. That's one of the things that I do to that I can do to uh, conserve some of that RCS fuel. But some of my smaller ships that are a little better balanced than this one, it will get up to you know 10 meters per second or so. But I've not seen it go any faster than that. And I've never had a craft once it gets close still go at 10. So it's not going to try and slam docking ports together. It will. I, I can leave that at 100 and it'll still go nice and slow. Um, and another way that I can conserve some, some RCS, is, some monopropellant, is to warp. I know what uh, it's trying to do. It's trying to line it up, so I'll just let it go a little ways and then let it adjust. Warp a little more. Yeah, but I've, uh, I, I mean, you can see those RCS thrusters just almost constantly going. And especially if your vehicle uh, vessel is not well balanced, they'll be just full time. And to give you an idea, how much RCS it can use. I've, uh, I've seen Scott Manley do manual docking and he uses, you know, for similar dock, he could use less than 100 monorepellent. And if I do a, you know, a similar dock to that with MechJeb, I can use over 400. It's just, it burns a lot of RCS. Um, but I can do things to, to limit the amount that it uses. You could even turn off the autopilot and drift away if you wanted to watch it in real time. <clears throat> or if, um, you know, you're watching this video because you want to 
see how it works and then you want to start trying it yourself you can also use the smart ASS which I don't call it smart ASS I just do that for this video because there are kids watching but to use this there's an op there are options in there to um, align to your target and the one that you would be looking for I can't show you now because I've got my autopilot on but it's a parallel minus and what that's going to do if you have a docking port targeted and you're controlling your vessel from your docking port it's going to keep those docking ports pointed parallel to each other so that as you come in if you start drifting to the side you're not turning to face the target your docking ports will always stay um, in the correct orientation with each other wait for this to get lined up and that's you know a, that can be a process uh, you know you start watching mech jeb dock for you and then you go to mech jeb assisted manual docking where you're making all the controls you're just having mech jeb uh, keep your docking ports parallel for you and then once you feel you don't need it anymore you can fly it manually do all your docks manually as we're getting lined up you can see the amount of mono propellant that we're burning isn't quite as much but I'm still gonna go ahead and warp a bit right now I'm watching these two thrusters here because they are the ones that are lining us up laterally and once they go back to just to not a constant push then I know that it's lined up of course I could also read these numbers here I can see my error wide right now is negative 0.2 once these all get pretty close to zero and they're holding there then I know we're moving forward. And then I'll go ahead and warp a little bit. And we'll probably have a little bit of an edit right there. Um, so my game just crashed so I don't know how it's possible but uh, when I started it back up I was right back here again I was pretty sure I was gonna have to launch this because I did not quick save at all <laughs> but fortunately we were right here so we'll go ahead and continue this dock it's not surprising that it crashed I had a pretty sizable video file going there but my frame rates are getting terrible now. Still. So I'm going to go ahead and let this do its thing and hope we don't crash again. Perhaps is really not enjoying the docking. Uh, just played around with some camera angles there, and I've got it somewhat stable, about uh, six frames. <laughs> so, I'm not going to try and warp anymore. We'll just let it go on in, and I'll uh, fast forward it in uh, editing. Okay, and I, uh, just went ahead and stopped filming there, so we'll edit back into this point. Got it under 10 meters. We're about to get our dock. I would have just abandoned the dock altogether. Um, really, you've seen how the autopilot works. 
but I did want to show you one more thing uh, as soon as we get these docked because I've seen a lot of people ask uh, especially those who had just started playing the game how you transfer fuel and honestly my personal space program uh, I've also got a couple of mods with mission packs and things like that um, but my personal program is mostly refueling I'll go explore something and then refuel I do have the cathane uh, pack to uh, extract fuel and refine fuel but um, a lot of people do ask um, how do you transfer fuel between tanks so cover that real quick but before we end this video and we're gonna bounce around a little bit let the magnets do their job and then we can transfer our fuel now the way you do it is you right click on either one of the two that you're transferring to or from hold down the alt key and you right click on the other and you get these in and out doesn't matter what you hit out from one tank into the other I'm gonna go ahead and try to fill this up as much as I can and when I was uh, getting ready for this video I was able to take some of the fuel and dump it onto the my uh, space station here at the moon but I did have to burn some and the space station has um, ROM fares laser pack so I was actually able to just dump some also so that helped out Okay, and the last of our fuel going over there. And that'll leave us just enough to get rid of this. And to undock, you just click on your clampatron and hit undock. And then you can use your RCS to just back away a little bit. Hit R to manually turn on your RCS. Not going to need these where you're going, my friend. And Matt Kaz can get back on his way. We'll use the smart ASS, turn retrograde. Make sure that we're not going to hit our lander a little space here and then we will fire retrograde still having some frame issues but that's okay pull away from him So we don't hit him with our engines and go ahead and burn off some of that fuel. <laughs> 